a lot of administrative agencies, especially in the federal system, have administrative law judges who adjudicate certain cases that are under the agency's purview. And there's been a line of cases throughout our history about what these ALJs or administrative law judges can and can't do. And that's the question that came up in the Securities and Exchange Commission versus Jarkasi, a 2024 U.S. Supreme Court case that we're going to talk about in this video. I'm Drew Stevenson. This is for my administrative law class. Let's dive in. So our main takeaway here in this case is the Supreme Court held that it was unconstitutional for an administrative law judge or ALJ to decide this securities fraud case, uh, even if the parties uh, could, uh, be, even before, uh, always seek judicial review in court afterwards for the ALJ's decision. And the reason here was almost completely focused on the Seventh Amendment right to a jury trial. And this is a public uh, rights exception to Article Three jurisdiction uh, f that allows ALJs to make certain decisions, but it doesn't apply in cases, certain types of cases where there's criminal penalties or criminal-like penalties assessed. In that case, the person has a right to a jury trial. So let's talk about some background facts for this case. Uh, Mr. Jarkasi is a bit of a character. Jarkasi was an investor and a conservative pundit, basically, who he was had a, a radio show and was on Fox News a lot and would boast that he was one of the first public figures to insist that President Obama was a, quote, communist. And Jarkasi started a couple of hedge funds and raised $30 million or so from investors. And this, this case started way back in 2011. Um, the SEC charged Jarkasi, um, his firm, and a related investment firm called Patriot 28 LLC with deceiving and defrauding investors by inflating the value of the fund's assets, which increased his management and investment fees. Basically, if you claim that the fund has more assets, then you can charge your investors um, higher fees. The SEC also found that he lied about the identity of the fund's auditor and prime broker, and as well as his own role in making investment decisions. Um, he lied to the investors. Uh, this is Andrew Calamari, who was at the time the director of the SEC's New York regional office. And his take on this was Jarkasi disregarded the basic standards to which all fund managers are held. Not only did he falsify evaluations and deceive investors about the value of their holdings, but he bent over backwards to enrich his partner in Belasis at the fund's expense. So the SEC found that Jarkasi used the fund's assets to hire multiple stock promoters in 2010 and 2011 to create an artificial and unsustainable kind of bump or spike in the price of two microcap stocks in which the funds were heavily invested. In other words, he kind of manipulated the um, price on the stock market of a couple of, of small stocks, uh, obscure stocks that uh, his funds were heavily invested in. And the funds recorded temporary gains in the value of the stocks, which Jarkasi just uh, then used to mask the write down of other fund assets with lower value. So the SEC imposed penalties on Jarkasi for doing this $300,000 fine against Jarkasi and Patriot 28. Um, he, uh, they ordered uh, both of them to cease and desist from violations of anti-fraud laws. Patriot 28 had to disgorge its earnings and they prohibited Jarkasi from participating in the securities industry and in offering penny stocks in the future. So he was unable to prevail on the merits. So what Jarkasi did was because he lost, was he challenged the constitutionality of the ALJ 
at the Securities and Exchange Commission adjudicating, adjudicating his case at all. In other words, if you don't like the outcome, you just say the judge is unconstitutional. And that's what he basically did. By the way, the administrative law judge in this case was Carol Fox uh, Folak, who had decades of experience and expertise as an administrative law judge with the Securities and Exchange Commission. So at the Supreme Court, the court held that it violated Jarkissi's Seventh Amendment right to a jury trial because the ALJ, uh, this person who's not in the judicial branch, but is instead um, part of a, an executive branch agency, that's who had imposed these civil fraud penalties. The, I pulled out a quote for you. The SEC's anti-fraud provisions replicate common law fraud, right? So there was a crime of fraud at common law. And it is well established that common law claims must be heard by a jury. And they relied on a line of cases that are mostly from bankruptcy, about bankruptcy law. The court held that if a case involves civil fines and or is based on alleged fraud, which existed at the common law in some form, that Congress cannot entrust adjudication of such claims to an ALJ instead of an Article III court where the defendant would have a right to a jury trial. Now, I want to make sure my students understand, they're not saying that the ALJ um, mis made the wrong decision in this case or that they didn't like the outcome. They're also not saying that or that the ALJ like overreached or um, that the agency did something outside of what the statute said. Instead, the, their position, the court's position is it doesn't matter if Congress tries to give um, an agency the ability to adjudicate civil fraud claims. The, uh, the fact is that at common law, those were entrusted to the judiciary. So they, um, the constitutional right to a jury trial applies. Now, there's another thing going on in the background about this case that you should probably be aware of. Like, where did this idea come from to say that ALJs are unconstitutional? Well, there are people out there who are critics of the entire administrative state, and a lot of them believe that defendants will fare better with juries. And they just assume, especially in the case of the Securities and Exchange Commission, that its administrative law judges are biased towards the agency. In fact, the Wall Street Journal had claimed this in a series of um, op-eds and articles had taken this position uh, back when before this case started. It, it turns out that it, academic researchers have found that that's not even really true. There's really negligible difference. Um, I have a site here of a 2017 empirical study showing that um, defendants don't get a, a, a worse treatment with an ALJ or unfair treatment with the SEC's ALJs. It's basically they have the same chances of winning or losing with the ALJ or a jury trial, but perceptions matter. And the perception for people who don't like the Securities and Exchange Commission is that the ALJs are always going to side with the commission. Now, the majority's opinion does not mention CFTC v. Shore, which is a case I cover in my class, which held that a jury trial was not required in some cases under the public rights doctrine. Gorsuch's concurrence and Sotomayor's dissent both mention it, so it, the case appears to still be good law. And so how do we distinguish this? Well, Shore was about pendant or ancillary jurisdiction, and um, Jarkissi was not. In other words, the, um, in the Shore case, they um, had a case where it, it was about a, a broker and broker's fees, and they it did not involve basically the assessment of um, criminal type penalties like here. So where does this leave us? Well, the expensive language of the opinion seems to narrow the public rights doctrine or the range of cases that administrative law judges can adjudicate uh, somewhat significantly um, to only those that are purely public rights with no common law um, equivalent or analog. Um, and note that there's a concurrence that says the, um, that this case didn't even go far enough. And, um, and that concludes our discussion of the 
SEC versus Jarkissi case from 2024, which is about the constitutionality of administrative law judges and the Seventh Amendment right to a jury trial.